Hey there, this is Nate Portner and I'm coming to you from ZBrush Workshops. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about insert mesh brushes. Now last week, as you know, Ryan talked to us a little bit about insert, insert mesh brushes in the uh, certification lecture uh, and he's asked me to do just a little supplemental video for you. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is actually creating your own. Uh, we went over this before, but let's just do it again, just as a setup for what's coming. So, what I have here is just the default sphere that comes inside of ZBrush. Uh, it's just this guy right here. And all I did was I uh, deleted higher, and I'm going to reconstruct the subdivisions now until we're down to just a plain old cube. We'll delete higher. And now I have my cube. All right. So let's use our transpose line. Uh, making sure that we are looking at it the right way. Okay. So use our transpose line. And let's just make this thinner like that. And we just want this guy to look a little bit more like a strap or what we'll need for a strap. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now the next thing that I want to do is actually I need to, um, as this being a strap, I need to be able to use the weld points function in our curve, right? Which if you uh, don't remember from last week, it's right here in our modifier sub palette, uh, oops, modifier sub palette weld points. Okay, so that's what I what I want to be able to do. But in order to do that, I can, I have to have an open mesh. I have to have points that can weld together, more or less. Uh, so for, for me to do that, I want to isolate out these two faces: this face at the top and this face at the bottom. Now, what's the problem there? What's what's the problem that I'm going to run into? Well, let's go. I have my select lasso brush right now. Let's go. Let's just we'll just try. Let's try and isolate this out. All right. There's our top. And let's actually we'll turn on double sided here just to make it easier on us. Invert our selection. We'll take out the bottom. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. That just it's just inverting our selection. It's not really doing what we want at all, right? That's no good. That's because it's so low poly. So here's what I'm going to do to get around it. This can be a pain in the butt. And if you, uh, if you just kind of keep in mind when you're doing this, this real quick trick, you're going to save yourself a lot of time. You could eventually get it so that you have isolated these out right but you might waste a little time doing it so like I said just remember this real quick trick all I'm gonna do is take smooth off we're gonna divide it once okay and now we have we have more polygons in there now see more polygons uh, and if I really want to be safe I divide it again but I'm not going to so now we can either go in like this we got that guy again We'll invert our selection, do this, boom. Eh, it's kind of not working the way we want it to, right? We gotta do that and we'll do that. And now that's kind of what we want. All right, invert our selection. That looks exactly like what we want it to look like, right? Alternatively, another way that you could do this, just so you have it in your toolbox, is uh, let's go down to polygroups. This is a very powerful way to use the polygroups function. So let's go polygroups, and because this is a cube, I'm going to say, let's polygroup by normal. Boom. And all of a sudden, I have different polygroups for every single uh, direction that the normals are facing, right? Because this is a cube, you just get it for each kind of general face, right? So let's go in. Now it's really easy, just we're going to control shift click and we'll just isolate them out very fast, right? Real quick. Done and done. 
Right, so we'll come back up here, we'll say geometry, go down to modify topology, delete hidden. Oop. And it's not letting me delete hidden because I have divisions, so we'll just delete lower. And now we'll do it again. Delete hidden, done. All right, so that's that. Now if I really wanted to be clean about it, uh, and actually I do need to be clean about it, we're gonna go in and we're gonna say polygroups, uh, polygroups auto groups uh, or we could just click control W and it do the same thing uh, in this in this instance all right so now I have this piece I like this piece this is the piece that I want it's good so this is uh, I want to make this into a strap all right so let's go up here first thing I need to do is make it an insert mesh create insert mesh all right, append, All right? New, we'll get to append in a second. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so um, let's go in here and we will, uh, we have our insert mesh now, right? Let's just, let's try to draw it out. And I know, I'm going to go up to my brush. I know that I need to have, uh, the first thing I need to do is turn on stroke curve, curve mode. It's all good. Brush. We don't want this to be triparts, but we will weld the points. Okay. So now we'll draw it out. Got to make sure, of course, that we're drawing on geometry that it doesn't have any uh, subdivisions. So we'll draw it out. It's looking pretty good, right? It's all one polygroup. I can edit it. I can move it around. It's looking pretty good. So that's that, right? Not looking too bad. Okay, so let's go back to this guy over here. So that's just, that's without my triparts, right? This is, the issue here is if I had this, I still have open ends. Open ends, I don't want that. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah, sure, I could go in and I could say, oh, let's just, you know, we'll go to our geometry and we'll just say close holes. And yeah, that, that works pretty well, right? But it works pretty well because this is a very simple strap, right? If you had a more complex thing happen in here, that close holes would not work out that well. And even here you can see it's kind of, you're getting funky geometry and it's uh, not fun, right? It's not the cleanest thing that you can do, right? And as it becomes more and more complex, it gets a lot dirtier. Sometimes that's okay. I like to be as clean as possible. So let's go back here. We're just gonna undo this guy enough so that we have our caps back. Both our caps, all right, looking good. We still got our 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 uh, division there. Let's remember to delete that. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to have multiple. I need to have two end caps and a middle. So let's do that. Get my end cap first. And what I'm going to do here actually is to make this a little bit easier for me. Rather than uh, using control with my move for the transpose line just to make a duplicate within the same subtool, I'm actually just going to duplicate it. And that way, it'll be a little bit easier for me down the line. So do that, duplicate again, and do that, All right? So now I have three pieces. Let's come in here. I want this one. Oops. But not the top, right? So this cap is good. This cap is not good. 
So same deal. Let's just grab that out, invert our mask. It's good. Geometry, delete hidden. Good. Subtool. Let's see these things again. Grab that guy. I'm just alt clicking to automatically switch subtools. Alt click, alt click. This one we want this. We do not want this. All right. Let's come in here. Grab that. Oops. Grab that. That. Good. Again. Geometry. Delete hidden. Boom. All right. And lastly, we will do this guy again. Delete hidden. All right, so now I have my middle piece. I can use weld points on for both sides, and my end caps have closed off pieces, right? So now what I need to do is this all needs to be part of the same object. So that's easy, right? Merge down. Merge. Merge down. Merge down. Boom. Look at that. Now what's the next thing that I need? Ryan talked about this. The next thing that I need is for each one of these to be a separate polygroup. This is supposed to be a tri-part insert mesh that I'm going to use on curve mode. That means I need three polygroups. I need one end, another end, and the middle. What's my easy way to do that? Polygroups, auto groups. Boom. Just like that. Why does it work like that? Remember, auto groups will group, will create new polygroups of every contiguous piece of mesh. So if there's a break in the mesh, it'll create a new polygroup, right? One contiguous piece, two, three. It's that simple. So now I have this. This is looking good. That's what I want. I'm going to kind of fill it out for most of the, bring it out to most of the document here. And let's say brush, create insert mesh, and now I'm going to hit my append. Remember before I was getting ahead of myself? Hit the M key to bring it up. Okay, cool. So that means that if I hit my M key, I can go back to the, I can either use the one that I don't want to use the triparts on, or I can use my tripart, right? And generally speaking, you're going to want to name these. Uh, and it, it's going to go by the name of the subtool. So if I was being more clean about this, I'd have taken the time to rename our subtools, right? So let's go back. Let's take this back into our sphere, and we're going to use this thing again. Brush. Now remember, this is tripart. Make sure triparts is on. Weld points. Good, good. Draw it out. Boom. That's exactly what we want, right? So that's how to make your own. Now, one last thing that we'll talk about is, let's say, let's, let's make a strap. Let's make some straps. Let's bring up our demo soldier here. And let's just say that we want to give him a strap somewhere. Okay. So we'll just isolate this guy out. Remember to delete lower because we can't draw out any insert mesh on a uh, on a mesh that has divisions right so delete lower all right so we'll come here I want to make a strap around his forearm so I come like this we'll start drawing out the curve draw it out and I hold down shift and I draw off the mesh boom suddenly I have a strap that goes all the way around now can you see the problem with this? What's the problem with this? Let's get a little bit closer. We'll check it out. Look at that. Our pieces aren't connected. That's going to cause us a problem down the line. You know, it's kind of a pain in the butt. 
I want a connected piece. So in order to do that, that's the, this is where the trick comes in. Well, it's not really a trick. It's just remembering, don't use the tripart mesh. And then turn off triparts, right? Make sure this is off. And now when I use this one, this mesh, right? This guy right here. Draw it out again. Holding down shift. Now we have a strap that is nice and continuous. Right? It's connected all the way. So there's a real easy way to do that. And it's still, it's pretty low, low resolution. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this isn't going to hurt my, isn't going to hurt my ZBrush at all by having that in there, you know? So that is our insert mesh. Um, that's what we wanted to talk about today. Uh, of course, you guys have my email. If uh, you have any questions or you need anything cleared up, please don't hesitate to get a hold of me. Remember, it's nate at zbrushworkshops.com. I'm more than happy to help. You'll never, never bug me. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, I hope that that was useful for you, and uh, I will see you at our class next week.